evening. My name is Charlotte Larson and I'm an NSR on the Athletic Relations Best Practice Committee. My fellow NSRs are Ariel Penny, Michelle Tran, Daniel Du, Brent Leatherwood, and Sierra Pino. And our project leader is the lovely Priyanka Dubru. And in case you guys forgot what NSR is, NSR stands for New Student Representatives. At each of the 11 residential colleges, Six NSRs are chosen by the President and the Senator. Of these six NSRs, three are chosen to serve on the Best Practices Committee. This year there were five different Best Practices Committees, as you guys already saw, and the NSRs were able to submit their preferences, and from these preferences they were placed in a Best Practices group. Once in the group, they work at the essay to evaluate a certain aspect of life at Rice University and try to figure out how they could improve this aspect. As you may have been able to guess by the name of our committee, we were concerned with the relationship between varsity athletes and the general student population. As the situation currently stands, there is a divide between the varsity athletes and the general student population. We believe this is a problem because this divide is not conducive to a accepting social environment, which we think is very important here at Rice University. So the goal of our best practices committee was to identify what the issues underlying this lack of integration <coughs> are and then figure out solutions to actually integrate the athletes into the student body as much as possible. Throughout the rest of the presentation, you guys will see the issues that we found, and then we will outline the solutions that we believe will help integrate the varsity athletes into the rest of the student body. Okay, um, so the two methods we used to uh, look at relations between athletes and non-athletes were interviews and surveys. And so uh, each of us six were responsible for two varsity sports and that covered all the varsity sports here at Rice. And so we um, distributed our athlete surveys through the coaches of these sports. And we actually met with the majority of the coaches as well. Um, that plays into the interviews. Um, we met with the majority of the coaches and also a few select players from each uh, varsity sport to get a look at um, their perspective on relations between athletes and non-athletes and possible like di uh, differences between different sports, such as like team sports, individual sports, or, like male and female sports. Um, and so our surveys uh, were distributed to the athletes or the coaches, and our non-athlete surveys were distributed through the presidents of each residential college. Um, so we targeted all the undergraduates here at Rice. Um, some of our survey questions were um, touching on subjects like OE integration, um, also like stereotypes, and like the housing um, situation with uh, athletes being roomed together, or like in quads, or like off-campus, things like that. Um, so an example of a question we asked was like, how effectively uh, do you think OE integrates athletes with the non-athlete population and explain? And so we looked at the athlete perspective versus like the non-athlete perspective and like, came up with logical conclusions. Um, as you can see, we had 172 athlete uh, responses and 180 non-athlete responses. And um, for a more detailed look at that, uh, here's like a breakdown of this course. Um, they had a good turnout from all of them except for men's cross country, men's track and field, and uh, <laughs> men's tennis, it looks like. But uh, overall, we felt like we had a really good turnout and that uh, we could draw pretty good conclusions from our study. One of the issues that we asked both athletes and non-athletes was whether they believed that grooming athletes together would make it harder for them to make friends with the non-athlete student population. And we found that 40% of athletes did say yes, it was an issue. And when asked to expand, many of the athletes, especially volleyball players who had room with non-athletes, said that it was the best decision they ever made. Um, they said it was a wonderful experience and they made many friends um, through their non-athlete roommate. And of those who said no, many of them had lived off campus or had lived with a teammate for all four years. So although these results are slightly misleading, I think that we can conclude that it is an issue when athletes room with other athletes and those who don't see it as an issue just don't really see what they're missing out on. And we can further conclude this um, through our survey to the non-athletes when like 90% of those students said that yes, having athletes in their college rooming with other athletes made it harder for them to be friends with those athletes. Alright, so uh, another, another issue that we try to tackle in our surveys 
was whether or not the athletes' practice schedules made it hard for them to integrate into the non-athlete student body here at Rice. And um, as you can see from the graph, out of our 172 athlete surveys, every single one of them said yes to that question. Of our 180 non-athlete student surveys, over 80% answered yes to that question. So with such a overwhelming answer such as this, we had to take it, take it into account, and um, it certainly became one of our top priorities at looking at uh, when trying to formulate suggestions and solutions um, down the road. And we'll tackle that a little further uh, in our discussion and call to action later on. And so another notable result that we had was when we asked the question, do negative stereotypes play a role in uh, the integration between athletes and non-athletes here at Rice? Um, out of our athlete population, over 90% said yes to that question. And uh, some of the more common stereotypes that came up uh, were things such as um, non-athletes stereotyping the athletes as um, students who were incapable of doing as well in the classroom. And uh, that's something that was really prevalent, especially on our athlete side of the surveys, that they felt stereotyped by the non-athletes. And um, something to consider is that it doesn't work only from the non-athletes towards the athletes. There are stereotypes that work both ways. Many of the athletes uh, say that the non-athlete student population is weird and they cannot uh, get in touch because of a difference of interest. So uh, amazingly, that was really common and it's something to consider that it's not only the non-athlete population here stereotyping the athletes. So process of collecting data and interviewing coaches and other students and athletes, we identified some key issues that we would like to discuss. The first being OE's integration uh, and the role it plays with uh, the athletes. Right now, a lot of athletes will come to Rice over the summertime before all the new students get here for OE, and they get a chance to meet with the coaches and their teammates, and they establish some really great bonds prior to OVIC, but when OVIC rolls around, they may not feel that it's necessary to branch out as much because they already have such a great uh, like establishment of friendships and people that they know. Um, the difficulty also is for the athletes that are in season, if they would like to take that opportunity to really connect with their fellow new students, it's difficult for them to manage that, especially when they have uh, late night bonding activities or if the certain bonding activities will conflict with their general schedule, practice schedule. Uh, another issue is the current rooming situation with athletes. Right now, uh, on the whole, most of the athletes are uh, automatically paired with a fellow athlete to room with here at Rex. And if, uh, while that's not a bad thing, um, the difficulty comes in when you look at the social groups. A lot of times students meet new friends and people through their roommate. And so when athletes room with only other athletes, that might make it to them to branch out and see new social groups. Uh, the other issue is uh, some athletes aren't required to live on campus more than a year or so or they may not even be required to live on campus at all. And I think baseball is an example of that. Uh, starting freshman year, uh, there's no requirement to live on campus. And again, living off campus isn't a bad thing. But the further away you are from Rice makes it a lot harder to stay involved with the community here. Uh, another really key issue that we think uh, should be considered is the negative stereotyping that happens on both sides of the spectrum. On one hand, as Brett mentioned, you have uh, some students that view the athletes as people who maybe got into Rice with different standards or are taking easier classes or have their, like certain advantages over the um, non-athlete student body. But on the other hand, you do have athletes who stereotype the, new, the students as having just a lot of extra free time to study or to hang out, whereas the athletes have these rigorous practice schedules and workouts. And so, again, there's, on both sides, uh, there's this key negative stereotyping ha 
Um, and then we also have, we've noticed this general apathy towards varsity sporting events here at Rice. And it's really <coughs> evident when you look at the fact that a lot of the support that students go out, they, they go out and support their college-related uh, <coughs> sports, like intramurals or powder puff. And when it comes to attending actual varsity sporting events, like a football game or a basketball game, the attendance is much lower. And so this kind of leads to, uh, we, we did consider it a factor that there seems to be a more pride for college over pride for Rice University as a whole. And then finally, uh, which was a huge issue, is the significant time constraints that athletes uh, have to deal with when it comes to their schedules. And everyone here at Rice is busy, but athletes function on a schedule that's different from the typical busy Rice student especially when it comes to the times that they have to uh, go to bed, if they have uh, early practices or multiple workouts per day. Um, and so the times that, they, that students would typically use to meet and to study and to work together, athletes have to work around it in a different way. So based on the discussion that Ariel just mentioned, we came up with a couple solutions that we would like to start implementing hopefully as soon as possible, but definitely starting in the spring. The first one would be always integration of athletes. Um, in the past, we've seen that um, coaches kind of like come up with their schedule of practice times and meetings, and then OE coordinators and first year programs come up with their um, agenda for OE of like the events that athletes must, must attend. Then they kind of just like swap schedules and then it's like, you know, athletes have to be at this event, athletes have to be at this event, and that's it. We feel that if we, you know, got the full week coordinators and first week program, first year programs to kind of sit down with the coaches, they could foster a better relationship with each other and more communication. By doing this, um, we feel that, you know, the coaches and the first year programs and coordinators can, you know, have the athletes maybe, um, practice all at the same time. And by doing this, more athletes can go to more early events. And then also, um, we feel that sometimes athletes have to do um, twice as much during OE. Um, for example, when they're here over the summer, they have to do OE, um, they have to do advising for you know their um, major and things like that. And then they get that same academic advising um, during OE. And we feel that, you know, if maybe, you know, the athletes get, you know, one academic advising, then that would suffice enough for them. And by doing this, it would give the athletes more time to be with their OE groups and foster more relationship and more bonds with them. Um, the second solution that we came up with would be the athletes' rooming situation. As I <coughs> mentioned, um, you know, we feel that athletes kind of, like, tend to stay with athletes. Instead, tend to stay with athletes. And um, we feel that if athletes are given the opportunity to room with a non-athlete, then they would have a better connection with more non-athletic students. And we know that some athletes may not want to do this, but even if they're just given the opportunity, then it will um, help better uh, foster the relationship between the two. Um, also, we feel that um, coming into Rice, we all filled out a form that said, you know, um, when rooming with someone, would you run um, rooming with a transfer, an international student, an uh, upperclassman, a uh, smoker, a non-smoker? And we feel that if we add one more box to the general population that says, would you like to room with an athlete? It would give people more of a chance to room with each other and better and make more relationships with each other. Um, of course, by doing so, you know, a non-athlete would have to <coughs> Um, be okay with like an athlete's sleeping schedule and their practice times, and we would take all of that into consideration as well. Um, the third thing would be um, breaking negative stereotypes. We came up with this idea of creating a video, and this video would be the day in the life of an athlete slash non-athlete. What we would do is get one um, non-athlete to follow an athlete for the day. They would wake up and you know go eat breakfast, go to class, go to workouts, go to practice, and just attend. They live in, they're gonna live in the shoes of an athlete for a day. 
And then uh, we would flip that, and then we would get an athlete to follow a non-athlete for a day. And they would, you know, get up as well, go to class, go to organizational meetings, go to practice, and things like that, just so that each side sees how the other side lives. And we feel that by doing this, it would better, um, it would help create an atmosphere where everyone kind of understands each other more. And then by doing this, um, it would eliminate negative stereotypes that, you know, an athlete just goes to practice and that's it and, like, they don't really care about class and then, you know, um, non-athletes just, you know, do work and then go and have free time to do whatever they want. Um, the last solution that we came up with um, would be um, just to get more support at sporting events. And um, two things that we came up with um, by doing this would be um, athletes promotion or athletes promoting their games more. Um, this past fall, the soccer team did a really good job of doing this. I don't know if a lot of you saw them, you know, going around the inner loop, screaming and yelling, like, "Hey, come to our game!" Handing out candy. And we felt that if more athletes promoted their games, then more people would attend. And the soccer team saw this. More people went and attended their games. And we also feel that as a university, uh, we're small and we're not like, you know, the big university that everyone attends games with a bunch of people. And the people that go to Ryan's varsity um, sporting events are because they personally know someone on the team. And we feel that if more athletes went to, you know, more organizational meetings, like say an athlete went to a play or went to an essay meeting, then they would um, foster more relationship with people at those events, and then those people would turn to go and support them at their varsity athletic events. And um, through all these solutions, um, these are all the solutions that we came up with, and hopefully we will start implementing. Um, does anyone have any questions?